Okay, welcome to control of nonlinear dynamical systems. Um, we are already in the second week, right? Uh, and we have already started some more serious material. Yeah. So uh, last time we started looking at stability, okay? And um, how we started talking about stability was, of course, first by fixing a system, initial conditions, defining what is the solution. We also spoke a little bit just to uh, spark our interest on the notion of the flow yeah which essentially sort of tells you how a bunch of initial conditions map to some final conditions after a certain amount of time okay so um, beyond that we uh, started talking about uh, the notion of equilibrium all right and how uh, we sort of care about isolated equilibrium yeah and we of course gave an example of non isolated equilibrium very easy to construct yeah i also showed you this pen which is rolling on a surface yeah it is completely non isolated equilibrium because every point is an equilibrium so without disturbance you don't move from any point at all okay so um, once we have the notion of equilibrium uh, all notions of lyapunov stability are defined with respect to an equilibrium all right no equilibrium no notions of stability okay so this is how lyapunov stability works yeah uh, there is of course lagrange's notions which we don't really talk about but there the you don't particularly need notions of equilibrium there you are talking about boundedness ultimate boundedness and uniform boundedness and things like that okay so slightly different notions which don't particularly talk about stability in the sense of lyapunov here we need an equilibrium so we started with the definition of stability so obviously you start seeing the equilibrium point appearing everywhere here yeah and uh, stability essentially is an epsilon delta definition the way we understand it yeah it just codifies the fact that if you start close to the initial condition sorry if you start close to the equilibrium you are expected to remain close to the equilibrium for all time all right and that's codified as given an epsilon there is a delta such that if you have if you start within a delta ball you remain within an epsilon ball okay so we of course understood this a little bit better hopefully yeah we um, sort of try to compare it with uh, you know boundedness and we sort of understood that it doesn't really compare with uniform boundedness well at all yeah one doesn't imply the other then we went on to talk about uniform stability which is just t0 removed okay so the delta does not depend on the initial time anymore and we clearly said that whenever we talk about uniformity in this course we are always uh, you know talking about uniformity with respect to time okay so whenever we say uniformity time is involved okay so that's the idea all right and then we of course looked at this very very nice example why is it a nice example because we can actually uh, construct a solution here yeah and we can look at some interesting properties and we in fact saw that uh, this system is uh, stable but not uniformly stable okay so we will of course explore more uh, properties of this system as we go along uh, and make uh, more definitions all right uh, so we'll explore further properties of what this is but uh, for now we know that this system that we have looked at is stable but not uniformly stable okay so what we do today is uh, we continue to talk about more properties uh, and we move towards asymptotic convergence or asymptotic stability okay so that's the idea for uh, today's lecture at least yeah so um, we start by assuming that the equilibrium is the origin yes please so the equilibrium is simply uh, any uh, point in the state space where uh, from which you never move under ideal circumstances okay that is you do not deviate from an equilibrium unless there is a disturbance present or anything like that okay so the equilibrium is simply a point on the state space from which there is no movement okay the states never move from there okay and how we compute it is pretty straightforward we just equate the right hand side to zero that's it 
okay that's how we compute it that's how we did it for this example also all right okay great so uh, for the rest of the presentation we we assume that the equilibrium is in fact the origin yeah it's not difficult to uh, shift the origin so that you can ensure that your equilibrium is always the origin you just do a simple change of coordinates like this yeah we we are very used to doing this whenever we are are uh, talking about the tracking problem for example right whenever we are doing tracking we always do some kind of a subtraction to make sure that we are always talking about going to the origin okay this is what we are comfortable with it's as simple as that yeah also makes our notation simpler i don't have to keep writing x e everywhere all right so from now on assume that the equilibrium is the origin okay 0 0 in the state space all right great uh, so we talk about the notion of attractivity now okay because this is the next important notion all right so what is attractivity for all t0 there exists a delta again possibly depending on t0 such that if you are within a delta ball of the origin or the equilibrium in this case as you can see then as t goes to infinity you approach the origin okay so this is simply attractivity the way you would understand it the only difference is you can you can see that it is defined locally yeah it is a local definition because it's saying that if you give me a initial time or t0 i will give you a ball of certain radius within which you have to start if you want to get here okay if you start beyond it we cannot guarantee anything okay so that is the important thing to remember the notion is local because i start within a delta ball i have to start within a delta ball that's it okay then obviously we uh, try to strengthen these notions right um there is the notion of uniform attractivity remember that i said that whenever we talk about uniformity it's always with respect to time so the only thing that depends on initial time here is this guy right? so if for uniform attractivity this delta is independent of t0 that's it okay as simple as that so very similar to stability uniform stability the delta was depending on t0 and then it doesn't depend on t0 exactly the same thing happening here okay i hope that's clear all right makes sense okay then specialize further so so attractive strengthened to uniform attractive further strengthened to globally uniformly attractive what is that the delta goes away completely you can start at any initial condition any initial time and you approach the origin as t goes to infinity okay so you are strengthening the definitions as you go down here okay so remember that when we spoke about stability one of you even asked i think that uh, is there is it local or global stability has no notion of local or global stability is just stability if you notice there is no if you give me an epsilon i give you a delta okay it's not local or global there there is nothing local global but here there is okay very clearly convergence is local or global so it's at or attractivity in this case it's a parallel notion to convergence for series so attractivity is local or it is global okay that's it so stability is a there is no local global there remember this okay so we have strengthened sufficiently i guess now the rest of the definitions are very simple it's just a combination of these two properties right what is the combination first we again start with the weakest notion asymptotic stability okay uh, acronym as all right we use these acronyms a lot of times because they are very long uh, sentences to say yeah uh um, so asymptotic stability requires a combination of stability and attractivity okay that's it you already know what is stability you already know what is attractivity if you have both properties for a system it is asymptotically stable okay see i no longer require any more epsilon delta definition you know in books of course you can if you go to vidya sagar and you go to some other text they will probably formally tell you the definition of each of these but then it's not required okay 
you have already defined stability you have already defined attractivity if you have both the properties then it is asymptotically stable okay and uh, unfortunately different books have slightly different definitions yeah uh, i would stick to what we are talking about here okay in, in most cases they are identical okay you can prove that one implies the other and so on and so forth all right so don't worry about the slight differences for example if you look at khalil you might find a slightly different definition if you look at the vidya sagar book you might see a slightly different definition yeah let that not you know sort of worry you one typically implies the other all right then we have uniform asymptotic stability here i just qualify each property with uniformity here okay so i need uniform stability and i need uniform attractivity okay so this is just uniform asymptotic stability all right so this is a pretty strong property yeah in fact yeah, one of the strongest properties you can have for nonlinear systems more often than not this is where you stop yeah then uh, neither of these uh, or none of these conditions actually talk about any rate of convergence all right you you can never say, in fact in most nonlinear systems you cannot actually say how fast you are going towards the origin okay it may be linear it may be sublinear it may be logarithmic whatever it could be very slow okay so you cannot actually guarantee but in some cases where you can you can define the notion of exponential stability why exponential and nothing else exponential is the holy grail because linear systems give you exponential stability right any any uh, linear system if you say it's stable it's exponentially stable it is nothing less okay all right uh, well linear time vary time invariant systems all right so what is exponential stability there exists constants r a and b positive such that this sort of a equation is followed okay again vector norms huh? basically norm of x t is less than or equal to a times norm of x0 times e to the power minus b t minus t0 okay so this is the typical exponential decay and this is this is to hold for all t t0 greater than or equal to 0 and for all x0 less than r okay in fact you can uh, probably write this slightly better and say that this is t greater than or equal to t0 greater than or equal to 0 yeah and for all initial conditions which are starting within a r ball okay so this is actually a local definition right whenever you are requiring your initial conditions to start within a uh, some ball of some radius okay then it is a local condition okay because you are requiring initial conditions within some set okay only then you converge is what you are saying here if you start beyond that set you are not guaranteed anything all such properties are local properties where your initial conditions are in fact required to start within some kind of a ball you can again strengthen this to global uniform asymptot oh sorry oh, i apologize this is actually a strengthening of this guy yeah strengthening of this is the global uniform asymptotic stability remember that there is no global local here so this remains as it is yeah but this property there is possibility of a global counterpart so you say that you require global uniform attractivity okay so all these other properties beyond stability uniform stability and attractivity they are just a combination of these properties okay which is what makes things relatively easy in terms of at least writing the definitions all right so uh, slightly off sequence i guess but anyway you had asymptotic stability then you went to uniform asymptotic stability then you went to global uniform asymptotic stability this is the strengthening okay uh, why the exponential stability in between is also makes sense yeah because exponential stability is also local okay so now i can move from exponential stability to global exponential stability what would be the difference this will go away right that's the only thing that is sort of keeping things local for you so this will go away so that's what you see there exists constants now only two constants because r is no longer required right only two constants here such that the same thing happens 
again i would say yeah t greater than equal to t0 greater than 0 same thing happens but for all initial conditions now okay no longer requiring any restriction on the initial conditions and hence global okay so what uh, one the exercise that is mentioned here is essentially to prove that exponential stability is stronger than uas okay that is exponential stability implies uniform asymptotic stability this is an exercise yeah and similarly global exponential stability implies global uniform asymptotic stability okay so you have to prove that this guy implies this guy and that this guy implies this guy only one way huh not the other way of course they are not equivalent okay so so what we are trying to say is that exponential stability gives you something more than uniform asymptotic stability and similarly global exponential stability is something more than global uniform asymptotic stability so that's what you have to prove okay so you have to start by assuming that you have this kind of a condition and then you have to prove uniform stability you have to prove uniform attractivity okay all right okay any questions yes yes if whenever global is not written you will assume that we are talking about local okay uh, many books do write local the use the word local uh, but more often than not we don't we don't say local uniform asymptotic stability local asymptotic stability and all that we just say asymptotic stability if the qualifier global does not appear then you assume it's a local requirement okay if that's yeah that's standard yes ah uh, we will see uh, so so it's a good question if there is an attractive system that is not stable stable system not attractive stable system not attractive is very easy any example of stable system not being attractive ha huh? oscillator yeah standard oscillator spring mass damper uh, no damper spring mass standard spring mass system oscillator they are all uh, you know uh, non attractive they are stable non attractive yeah linear oscillator let's stick to linear oscillator non linear oscillators funny things might happen uh, but he, what you are asking is the other way around if there is an attractive system that is not stable so we will see examples we will see very interesting examples yeah all right ah i immediately went to the example i want to go back first to this system okay the system we considered okay now let's look at this system and um i i really hope that you at least remember what happened here if you look at this system we wrote the solution uh, in this form right where um, gamma is of course a function of initial time right um and this is the initial condition yeah um, but this is the basic evolution okay can you tell me if this system has any of the so you already know that it is stable and not uniformly stable okay does it have any attractivity property is the system attractive or does it have any attractivity property because that's what we need to claim uh, asymptotic stability or something like that right but do you think it has any attractivity property just looking at this solution what does attractivity require ha huh? if you start with a norm less than delta then you converge to the origin okay so if you start with norm less than delta you converge to the origin do you think that that is going to happen here with this system yes why t squared absolutely yeah once you fix the initial time yeah then because of t squared because t square we discussed this right in fact this is the picture beyond a certain time whatever is in the exponent this guy is going to become negative and negative exponential means what decay right you are going to go to the origin so exponential of negative quantity 
in fact fast decreasing negative quantity is going to go to the origin ok ok great what is delta in this case what is the restriction on initial condition I said norm x0 less than delta implies you converge to the origin as t goes to infinity right. So, you are right as t goes to infinity obviously con converges to 0. What is the delta? What is the bound on initial condition that is required? Huh? m, m is somehow the bound on this guy right. Uh, so, m is you are saying the supremum of this, but why? How, how do you, but it is uh, on an exponential right first of all, you are taking exponential of this guy first of all. Huh? What is f now? There is no f. I have an exponential of this guy, eh? remember I do not have any general function here, it is a very specific function here and m is the upper bound of this term here. So, let us look at the definition again, you want this for attractivity right, start in a delta ball, if you start in a delta ball you converge to the origin. What is delta? Huh? Absolutely, there is no delta. So, the trick question, alright. Why there is no delta? You give me any initial condition, how does it matter? You give me any x t0, the exponential, this exponential is once you fix t0, so gamma is fixed, you, this exponential is always going to push me to 0, irrespective of what my initial condition was. You can give me a x t0 as 10 to the power 10, irrelevant. This exponential is definitely going to go to 0, it is a constant, whatever it is, it is a constant. This is also a constant. So, both of these are just some constants, even if they are huge, it is irrelevant, right, because this exponential is going to go down really fast as t goes to infinity, it is going to go to 0, so it is going to get rid of whatever these guys are. If you get 10 to the power 10 here, it will become less than 10 to the power minus 10 after a certain time. You can always find that time also, alright, okay. So, in fact, this is then what? Globally attractive, okay, great. So, it has global attractivity, okay, excellent. Uh, what about global uniform attractivity? Yes, no, because there is no delta. So, uniformity only required delta to be independent of T0 and all that, but there is no delta requirement at all. So, it is globally uniformly attractive, ok. So, what, so what property does this system have now? It has stability and global uniform attractivity. So, what does the combination give me? Huh? GAS does not give me GUAS, ok, because I do not have uniform stability, this is not there. In fact, well, let us look at, yeah. So, this property is not there. So, uniformity, no. Instability, no. But we have this guy, okay. So, the best property we have is something that I have not written here. It is uh, something that I usually write here, uh, somewhere in between. G A S is stable plus globally attractive, ok. So, it has a property that I have not mentioned here in this list, but you understand how it is coming, it is not such a complicated thing, alright. So, basically it is stable plus globally attractive, ok. So, it is globally asymptotically stable, that is it. It is not globally uniformly asymptotically stable because that would require uniformity for stability which I do not have, alright. That is the idea, great. Any questions? So, that is what it says here, I believe, did I say it somewhere here? 
Yeah. Yeah. So I have actually said it here. Yeah. Globally asymptotically stable and not globally uniformly asymptotically stable. All right. 